Prayer is an aspiration of the heart. It is a simple glance directed towards heaven. It is a cry of gratitude and love in the midst of trial as well as joy. Finally, it is something great, supernatural, which expands my soul and unites me to Jesus. Prayer is a manifestation of divine glory, a treasure, the key to heaven, man's greatest virtue, a pious way of forcing God, the holy water that by its flow makes the plants of our good desires grow green and flourish, a wine which makes glad the heart of man, an importunity which becomes our opportunity, an uplifting of the heart, a cry of gratitude and love, the bridge over temptations, and the death of sadness, and the token of future glory. As our body cannot live without nourishment, so our soul cannot spiritually be kept alive without prayer. By prayer, man gives God the greatest glory possible. Prayer ascends and mercy descends, high as are the heavens and low as is the earth. God hears the voice of man. The prayer of a humble soul penetrates the heavens and presents itself before the throne of God and does not leave without God's looking on it and hearing it. It is on humble souls that God pours down his fullest light and grace. He teaches them what scholars cannot learn and mysteries that the wisest cannot solve, he can make plain to them. We must pray without ceasing in every occurrence and employment of our lives that prayer which is rather a habit of lifting up the heart to God, as in a constant communication with Him. Pray as though everything depended on God. Work as though everything depended on you. Virtues are formed by prayer. Prayer preserves temperance. Prayer suppresses anger. Prayer prevents emotions of pride and envy. Prayer draws into the soul the Holy Spirit and raises man to heaven. When prayer is poured forth, sins are covered. Faith believes, hope prays, and charity begs in order to give to others. Humility of heart forms the prayer, confidence speaks it, and perseverance triumphs over God himself. Spiritual joy arises from purity of the heart and perseverance in prayer. He who does not give up prayer cannot possibly continue to offend God habitually. Either he will give up prayer or he will stop sinning. When you have asked the Holy Spirit to help you pray well, put yourself for a moment in the presence of God. Before prayer, endeavor to realize whose presence you are approaching and to whom you are about to speak. We can never fully understand how we ought to behave towards God, before whom the angels tremble. Prayer ought to be short and pure unless it be prolonged by the inspiration of divine grace. God is more anxious to bestow his blessings on us than we are to receive them. God wishes to be asked. He wishes to be forced. He wishes, in a certain manner, to be overcome by our prayer. He would not urge us to ask unless he were willing to give. The devil strains every nerve to secure the souls which belong to Christ. We should not grudge our toil in wresting them from Satan and giving them back to God. He causes his prayers to be of more avail to himself, who offers them also for others. If we would be saved and become saints, we ought always to stand at the gates of the divine mercy to beg and pray for, as an alms, all that we need. It is simply impossible to lead a virtuous life without the aid of prayer. Let us ask our Lord to work in us and through us, and let us do our utmost to draw him down into our hearts. For he himself has said, without me, you can do nothing.